to another series of Insemilie. Uh, today, myself, Archana was a assistant professor, College of Insurance. Insurance Institute of India is going to talk uh, to our esteemed guest, Dr. Sanjeev Jha. On behalf of Insurance Institute of India, we would uh, formally like to welcome you, sir, in this interaction. So before I start posing my question to sir, uh, let me uh, introduce him. Uh, some of you may have uh, dealt with him because he uh, he has spent good two and a half decade in insurance industry in India and abroad. Uh, he started his career in 1987 uh, as a direct recruit officer. After working with two uh, PSU companies, he moved into private sector in India, worked again with uh, two Indian companies before moving abroad uh, to Oman and later in Sri Lanka. Uh, in his last assignment, sir was the CEO of Fairfax uh, Sri Lanka and currently sir is looking after the Asia Pacific portion of uh, Fairfax. So welcome you sir. So I will like to start with uh, because of your background. I would like to start with after working in India, you transition into international market. So for um, all the audience, can you share details of specific challenges faced by you during your transition from Indian market to international market. Thank you so much. Arshna. It's such a pleasure to to be here. I'm a big fan of, of you and I'm a big fan of uh, Insurance Institute. So thank you for having me here. And before I answer your question, just a small correction. I'm not looking after the uh, Asia business of Fairfax. I'm, I'm acting as a consultant advisor to them for the for the Asia business. Um, but absolutely, absolutely delighted to be here. So you are right. So I when I moved, when I did my first uh, overseas assignment, that was as a CEO of uh, Royal and Sun Alliance Oman, and that was way back in uh, in 2006. Now, a few of the challenges that 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 sort of uh, that were there. One was the technical challenge, uh, Arjuna. Like you know, if you remember in those uh, in those days. Uh, uh, India was still a tariff market largely. You know, the, the de-tariffing was just about rolling out. Um, when I went to the Middle East, uh, that was already de-tariffed. So, so, so that was a bit of a learning for me in terms of uh, how do you price a product and stuff like that. Because, you know, when, when, you, when we grew up in the tariff market, we never learned that, that, that science of, of pricing and, and stuff like that. So that was, that was an interesting challenge. Um, the second was that... Uh, some of the regulatory aspects of insurance varies in different markets. So, for example, the different regulators may have a different commission structure. They may have a different third party uh, product. They may have a different uh, WC. But the wonderful thing is that 90 percent of our trade of our insurance trade is globally the same. So whether you're working in India, whether you're working in Florida, whether you're working in South Africa, it's still the same. We still underwrite. They're still under insurance. There's still the same things that that we go through. So that's the that's the good part of of of, of being in our trade. Uh, the third area, which is which is which was very interesting, was that uh, uh, you know insurance that time had just been privatized when I left India, and uh, all companies were looking at the top line as the main thing, the revenue, the gross certain premium. Globally, that is not the right parameter to judge a good insurance company. A good insurance company is just by the underwriting profits or the combined operating ratio. So that was a that was a good learning. I'm so happy that I learned that because that has changed the way that I, I look at insurance. I think the fourth area is the cultural aspect. You know, whenever you move out of home, uh, there's a bit of anxiety. There's a bit of uh, nervousness that will I be able to be OK there? Will I like the people? Uh, but very early in life, uh, Ashna, I realized that people are the same. You know, whether whether you, I'm sitting in Delhi just now, you're in Bombay. I have friends in Sri Lanka. I have friends in, in Canada. It's still the same. We all want to do the same thing. We all want to be loved. We all want to do a good job. So ultimately, we are all the same human beings. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I would like to continue um, on the same thing. That can you share one best best practices we can, which you can um, uh, advise uh, Indian insurance industry to adopt immediately from your experience? <laughs> I think I think uh, I definitely I'll answer your question and and I'll tell you that one thing that I think is is a great practice. But before that, I must say that India is seen very highly. The Indian insurance industry. And the Indians insurance capability is seen very highly globally. 
So I think we have many best practices that we can give internationally. And again, like your, your institute that you represent, there's so many good things that, that, that we do that many other companies are looking up to. I think one of the great practices that I've learned working for the North American for Fairfax and also for before that with Royal and Sun Alliance is their focus on underwriting. I think ultimately we are as insurance uh, professionals, we are underwriters. You know, that is our job. Our job is a simple job of looking at a risk and saying, can I underwrite this at the right price for the right terms? And sometimes in the chase for top line, we forget that. So I think a great good practice for any insurance company is to get that underwriting fundamentals back in their organization. You can't ignore that. Insurance companies die because of bad underwriting, nothing else. And, and I think insurance companies prosper because of good underwriting. So if there's a good practice, Harshina, it is like go back to the basics. We are underwriters. Let's be proud of underwriting. Yes, as, as an ex underwriter, I can uh, relate <laughs> to the, the feeling. Uh, so, uh, sir, my next question is: We have seen unprecedented time of COVID-19, and which has impacted all the uh, sectors. So, in your opinion, what is the main impact we will see in insurance sector? Fantastic. I think I think it's uh, it's something that we are all grappling with. There are two areas, uh, Ashna, that I, which which is which is which is linked to all the way business is structured and the, the way the insurance is structured. I think the way the business is structured, I think people have realized that the good old ways of of having a a physical demarcation a job between office and home may not survive. And it won't survive not because we want as employers or employees we want to you know have a more hybrid model but also the customers want a more hybrid model they want a lesser touch they want a more remote thing so i think that 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 entire way that we operate the way we organize the way we manage is is going to change now look at this two of us are talking on on a on a, on a ms team call right you know so this is such a big change from the earlier days I think specifically on insurance, I think there are two areas that, that, that come to mind. One is that digital will become very, very important. I think digital was already important. Data was already important, but that, that you know, that, that relying on that handshake, taking your broker out for lunch or dinner, I think those days are gone or becoming less. And, and therefore, we'll have to rely on much more uh, virtual ways of dealing, much more virtual ways of servicing. Um, which is which is interesting because that will put pressure on the way underwriting and claims has been traditionally been done. Um, you have you been an ex underwriter. Uh, underwriters have often demanded a lot of physical documentation. Now that has to go away. That has to be replaced by something else. And and I think that's a challenge that that many underwriters will face. Same thing in claims. I think um, we will have to find very efficient ways of servicing claims because there could be lockdowns. And, and the claimant can't wait for, for too many days before the claim is serviced. So I think that's a big challenge. So one is one is at the operating, the managerial level of how you manage this hybrid model of working from home. The other is the technical, how do you underwrite, how do you settle claims in a, in a situation where you may not have physical um, access to risk or assets. Uh, so when we are talking about digital during, uh, especially during COVID time, all of us are facing one challenges of uh, adjusting work-life balance and you being somebody who has done his PhD, who also plays a guitar, which uh, some people are uh, aware of, I have uh, the pleasure of even listening. So how, I, I would like uh, you to share your secret sauce for managing this work-life balance. <laughs> Wonderful, Ashna. I think, I think, I think there, is, there is no secret sauce. I think I'm, I've, I've been blessed to to have some great colleagues, great friends who made my life, a great family who made my life simple and, and easy. Um, I think the way I see it, everything I do is a choice I make. Uh, so I choose to be a CEO. Now I've chosen to be a, in an advisory and a consultancy role. So these are choices I make. It's like going to a restaurant and ordering three, four dishes to eat. So I have ordered my dishes. Some days I like to eat dessert more. Some days I don't eat dessert, but, but basically music, um, work, friends, these are these these are like for me it's the same thing. You know, I'm as interested in all of them. And uh, some days, like I said, I spend maybe 12 hours working, and maybe for many days, or maybe most days, I don't spend 12 hours working and I do other things. 
so i think it's just it's just a combination of that and i think life is beautiful i think we forget forget there's so much so much beauty out there there's so much talent um there's so much to enjoy each other's company and i think that's what i thrive on that's what i enjoy doing uh thank you for such a wonderful answer it brings me to uh, my last question what message you will like to give to all our members of insurance institute of india family uh to take home uh, from this interaction actually i think very very like you know um, i'm a, i'm a big fan of technical knowledge and i think insurance institute of india is is a premier institute we have all benefited from there so any member of insurance institute anyone who's in the insurance industry must focus and make sure that they invest in uplink updating their entire technical knowledge um, i think that's that's the ultimate thing we are we are an international trade so i think we should be very proud of it like i said what we know what you know us now what all the members of insurance institute know that is valuable whether they are in toronto whether they are in 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 chennai whether they are in colombo it's a, whether they are in dubai it's the same knowledge so i think be proud of our, our industry and the more you can learn the more you can understand of our industry i think the better it is and insurance institute is definitely one of the top institutes of not only india but in the definitely in the region uh thank you so much sir for such a wonderful interaction with us uh hope to see you in a physical world uh, very soon because now you are back in mumbai so thank you again and uh, bye from uh, me thank you arshnab stay blessed